In the year 2015, a young, relatively unknown YouTuber named The Black Critic Guy reviewed a series called Aoi Bungaku. An anthology anime comprised of six short stories written by revered yet tortured Japanese authors. Adapted for television by many talented directors, writers, and artists working in anime today. Including the artists behind Death Note, Bleach, and The Prince of Tennis. They brought these dark and tragic stories to life because though they were written long ago, their themes and messages are as relevant, enriching, and impactful now as they were back then. They are evergreen because they are masterpieces. Aoi Bungaku Review. Please watch. Hey guys, the Black Critic Guy here with my review for the anime Aoi Bungaku. And since I already sort of explained what this anime is all about, being an anthology anime comprised of six short stories, let's just get on to the review, shall we? Now once again, I had no idea what this anime was. In fact, I've never even heard of this anime until this year when you guys recommended it to me. And I didn't know what it was going to be all about. All I know is I was reviewing it for horror months, so it must have some horror elements to it. So I did some research on the anime and was surprised to discover that it's actually an anthology anime. I've never seen an anime done in the style of an anthology series before, so it made it very unique to me. Now, for those of you who don't know what an anthology is, it's basically when a movie or a TV show is comprised of a collection of short films or stories put together to make either a feature-length film or a TV show. Think VHS, VHS2, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and most famously, the Twilight Zone, all of which just so happen to be horror-centric. So it makes me feel like that's the path that Aoi Bungaku would also take. I mean, even the way that it's presented, you have a guy that does an introduction very similar to like Alfred Hitchcock Presents or The Twilight Zone, where they kind of introduce the story to you before you actually see it. So you get a sense that they were heavily inspired by the same elements from those TV series. And so I finished this anthology anime, and guys, this was an excellent anime, both from an artistic standpoint and a writing standpoint. Not to mention that a majority of the stories featured in the series are very engaging and entertaining, albeit darkly entertaining. First great thing about this anime, its overall presentation. The introductions in particular that play at the beginning of each episode are well shot, well narrated, and are just as interesting as the stories that they are introducing. They do a really good job at pulling the audience into the anime. For me, I found it just fascinating learning about the different authors behind the stories featured in this anime, learning about their lives, their personalities, what inspired them to write the stories that were featured in this anime, just learning so much about them in such a short amount of time. And damn, most of these authors are just as dark and tortured in real life as their characters are in the stories that they wrote. About half of the authors featured in this anime met tragic and very depressing fates. It really makes you question whether or not you want to be an author after seeing this anime. I know it made me question it. But when praising the anime's presentation, I'm not just talking about the introductions at the beginning of each episode, I'm also talking about its animation and tone. First off, the animation. It is just gorgeous looking. And I love that the animation varies with each story. Each one has their own unique and visual flair to them. But truly, this anime's magnum opus was episode 12. That is by far one of the most beautiful, breathtaking, and visually stunning episodes I've ever seen in an anime. Like, that episode alone can be its very own epic masterpiece at how beautiful it looked. Like, it just lit it literally took my breath away. And the animation truly complements the overall tone of the anime, which is very dark and melancholic, which makes a lot of sense considering that a lot of the authors are just as dark and melancholic as the stories that they have written, as I've said before. And since we brought that up, 
Let's talk about the stories featured in this anime. A majority of them were excellent, very well written, I was very involved and invested in what was going on. I liked most of the stories in this anime. And most of them have very different themes explored in the story. My two personal favorite stories in the entire series were Kokoro and Ron Melos. Kokoro is basically a romance story, which explains why I really liked it, but with a really tragic ending to it. And it handles a love triangle in a very serious, sophisticated, yet interesting way. It's not some type of melodrama bullshit where two people are arguing over the same person. No, no. It's much more deeper and complex than that. And I loved how the story was told from two different perspectives. The sensei's perspective and Kay's perspective, giving you a real insight on how each one of them saw each other and how both of them saw the situation. And then there's Run Melos, which in my opinion is the only story featured in this anime to to have a happy conclusion. Yes, the ending still had some sad parts to it, but overall it's still very uplifting in the fact that the conflict throughout the entire story is resolved by the end and the friends do rekindle their friendship. So it's a bit of a feel good story. It makes you feel good at the end, but also kind of just tugs at your heartstrings. It's, it's bittersweet is what it is. The story is impactful and rich with emotion. And I loved how the dilemma that the main character faces in the story parallels the Greek story that he's translating. And most of the characters featured throughout the various stories, while I can't say that most of them are likable because a lot of them are extremely despicable, the most despicable one being the one in episode 11. You're not supposed to like that guy whatsoever. I will say that they are extremely relatable as they do embody many human emotions that we all face, whether it's suicidal thoughts, the feeling of heartbreak, the feeling of loss, the feelings of regret, the feelings of fear, the feelings of disappointment, all displayed in the characters featured in this anime, and they're done very well. And the anime's voice acting is very solid as well. It just breaks my heart that there's no English dub for this anime yet. Come on, Funimation! Buy the rights already, or Viz Media, anybody, just buy the rights and do an English dub. This anime is begging for an English dub. This anime could have easily have lived up to the narrator's words and be an epic masterpiece, if not for one glaring issue, and it is a big one. It is so distracting and so different from all the other stories that it really felt out of place, and that was Episodes 5 and 6, dealing with the story about the soccer tree that bloomed in the forest. Fucking hated it! Now the story itself isn't bad and it had a very intriguing message to it. Beautiful things can hide very dark and disturbing truths. But its overall execution was horrible. Horrible. The tone is all over the place. Sometimes it's extremely silly. Sometimes it's extremely whimsical. And then it becomes extremely dark in a drop of a dime. It tries so desperately to be this really dark story done in a shonen fashion. And the two just, they, they don't mesh well together. Not at all. The characters in the story are not only generic, but they're incredibly dull and forgettable. You don't care nothing about them. You never once invested in them. Hell, I didn't give two shits about the main guy of the story. Hell, he's kind of a dick. And I know what some of you are going to argue. Tony, they only had two episodes to develop their characters. They didn't have enough time. Give them a break, man. Bullshit. If Kokoro and Run Melos could develop their characters in two episodes, why couldn't they? Hell, the last story featured in this anime did a better job at developing their characters, and there was only one episode. One! But the two major things about the execution of the story that just, just killed me, pissed me off and ruined what would otherwise have been a very interesting story was first off its confusion as to what time period it takes place in. Like from the look of it, it looks like it takes place in feudal Japan, you know? They're riding on carts, they're hunting in the woods, but then there's a scene where the character is blowing bubble gum and listening to music. Like he takes his headphones off, he's like, hey, what'd you say? And then there's another scene where these two characters pull out a cell phone and take pictures. 
What? What time period does this take place in? I understand they're doing that as a visual gag, oh, it's so funny, but it just doesn't fit the tone of the story once again. It's distracting. And it's the only times you ever see modernism in the story. There's no other moments where you see this. So why even put it in to begin with? And the last thing is, Making a Sakura tree scary. Now I understand what they were trying to do, as I mentioned earlier, but again, it's about how you execute it. And it was done very poorly. Like any sense of suspense, any sense of terror, pshoo, gone. There's this one scene where the character is standing in front of the Sakura tree, supposed to be like this really uneasy feeling. It just came off as really comical. He's running away from a soccer tree. What a little bitch. Just the idea of seeing a grown man, a big muscular man, running in terror of a soccer tree. That... <laughs> now I know I shouldn't be getting so worked up about this one story in an otherwise excellent anime. The rest of the stories were great. They were interesting. They were compelling. But god damn, this anime was literally two steps away from being an epic masterpiece had it not been for this one crummy execution of this story. It holds it back. But fret not. Unlike the stories featured in this anthology, this review does have a happy ending. Cause overall, besides that one lackluster story that we will not think of again, the rest of the anime is a true treat to behold. Rich with history and culture of Japanese authors that have been forgotten by the main populace and now have resurfaced to teach the next generation what real heartfelt writing truly is with its amazing storytelling, visual and stunning spectacular animation, great voice acting, a solid narrator, and an overall great tone and atmosphere, I'm gonna give Aoi Bungaku a 4.5 out of five stars. I think that it is one hell of an anime and one that you definitely need to check out at least once. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? Did you like it as much as I did and found it to be a true work of art? Or did you find it really boring and you never were attached or invested in any of the stories featured in this anthology anime? And let me know what is your favorite anthology? Film, TV series, or anime, or let me know what's your favorite story in this anthology anime. Comment below, let me know, and stay tuned, I will be doing a Why I Won't Watch video tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure you all know what it's gonna be about. <coughs> So until that video comes out, guys, if you would like to see more videos on this channel and be a part of the Black Critic Crew, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm telling you what in a second, the master author known as the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube. <laughs>